Hey everyone, I'm Susan Riley from the Institute for Arts Integration and STEAM, and today I'm going to do something called an audit. Um, lots of times when I'm working with school administrators or um, people, teachers who are working on arts integration certification or STEAM certification, they have lots of questions about what makes a good arts integration lesson. How do I know if what I'm looking at is a quality arts integration or STEAM lesson or not? And so I thought it would be really helpful for you to see me go through an actual audit. So when I'm working with our direct clients, I will actually sit with them and I will go through this process just like I'm going to go with it today. And we'll take a look at some lessons and we will go through where the things that are good and the things that are missing and how to know whether it's a, a great lesson or if it needs a little bit of work. So that's what we're going to start with today. I have two lesson examples that I just randomly pulled from the internet. I've also removed all names and identifying information for anonymity because again, this is a learning experience for everyone, right? So the first one I'm going to do, um, I want to share with you. This one is um, a lesson that I pulled off of Teacher Pay Teacher and it was a free lesson. So I just happened to download it and this was what was provided. Um, I was able, the lesson plan itself looks like this. Uh, that's it. Um, and then there are links to a PowerPoint that is used with students. Okay, pretty basic. Now the learning objective here says that students are going to respond to a work of art through careful observation, description, and creative writing as a form of interpretation. Then they're going to brainstorm nouns, verbs, and adjectives suggested by the work of art and use a word bank that they have created to, to write a collaborative poem inspired by the painting. Okay, so just at first glance, let's take a look at this learning objective. First of all, I don't see any standards present. And for this to be a true arts integration lesson, I got to see standards for both the content area and the arts area. So while this is addressing some standards that exist in visual art and some standards that exist in reading, unless we're explicitly stating what they are, we could easily lose track of number one, what we're trying to teach, and number two, and maybe more importantly, um, the true meat and potatoes of that content area. The last thing that we want to do in arts integration is dilute either the content or the arts area, right? The fastest way to do that is by eliminating our standards. So um, I would want to see standards at the top of this lesson, um, hopefully side by side, so that um, they, again, achieve equal weight. In terms of the learning objective itself, though, when we take a look at this in terms of cognitive demand, so what, when we talk about cognitive demand, we're, it's, we're thinking about at what level are we asking our students to work? What kind of brain power is needed here? So first of all, they're gonna to respond to a work of art. So they're not just passively looking at it, they're having to respond. So that's a little bit higher of a level of cognitive demand, not quite as high as creating, of course, um, but certainly more than just taking a look at it. So we're asking them to respond to, to the artwork. Um, we're asking them to interpret that artwork, again, Respond is different than interpret. So respond is just asking them, what do you see? Maybe what do you think? What do you wonder? Interpret is, what do you think is actually going on here? It's a different level of cognitive demand. So now you're asking students to do two different things with the art. Let's take a look at what they're trying to do with the, um, the, the nouns, verbs, and adjectives. We're gonna brainstorm a list suggested by that work of art. So um, we're gonna have to kind of tap into looking at that work of art and then having to create our own list of nouns, verbs, um, and adjectives. That's a very high level of uh, a brain power that's working there. Um, and then we're going to use that word bank to create a collaborative poem inspired by that painting. So again, we're at that create level. So in the, the reading area, we're asking students to operate at the highest level of cognitive demand, pulling um, create out as our, our action word there. We're asking them to operate a very, very high level of cognitive demand. In art, um, it's not to that same level. So there's a mismatch there. Um, it's approaching that level, but it's not quite the same. So I would want to take a look at, do are you asking equal weight 
And again, I'm not seeing equal weight given to the arts area as well as the reading area in here. There's a lot of ways that we could quickly adjust that. We would just need to have a little bit better understanding of the process. So let's look at that. First of all, your materials are pretty simple, but then we're going to take a look at the lesson plan itself, right? So um, this is a lesson plan about Washington crossing the Delaware and taking a look at that very famous painting um, and then using that famous painting to identify five nouns observed on that artwork, as well as five adjectives. Um, and then it looks like just one verb because um, I don't see it uh, on that lesson plan a specific other than um, figuring out that verbs are action words and, and identifying possibly a verb that's going on. Okay, so we're looking at the piece of artwork in order to consider it. So I, I like how it starts with um, having thinking goals there and asking students to look carefully at the painting for a full minute, um, asking them to then consider that work of art for that minute, but instead of just sharing what they see, now we're gonna give them a specific component to address. I would love to give students a little bit more time here. Um, instead of jumping straight into five nouns that you see, if you're gonna give them the full minute to look at the art, and if your learning out objective is to, um, to respond to that work of art and interpret it, I would want to actually interpret it, not just go find nouns that are in the, the work, right? So I would love to add that piece in there. That's going to add a robustness to this lesson that would then help students um, to identify those nouns based on what they've interpreted, based on what they're seeing, right? So I think there's a little bit of a missing step there. Um, identifying five nouns is fine, right? We're gonna, we're gonna identify those five nouns using sticky notes um, to record them to as a person, place, or thing and identify that in the artwork. That's great. And then it'll share some group discussion. Then on the next stack, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna do, you have five adjectives. And then finally, we're looking for that verb, right? At the end here on slide seven, it says share some information about the artist with the class. They might find it interesting to hear the history of it. They totally will, um, but um, when we, but that's kind of like an afterthought here, rather than a really cohesive way of pulling these th these things together, adjectives, nouns, and verbs. When we look at that in the painting itself, in when you're asking students to interpret those things, I would love a, a connection here where we start looking at is there a way that we might have made a different choice as the artist for a different noun or a different verb or a different adjective. Again, it's small little things, but they make a big difference in, um, the, in how well this lesson is gonna do for students. Uh, but then we go straight into the word pile poem activity, which is when the students are gonna use their post-it notes of an adjective, a noun, and a verb uh, to write a short phrase that describe their thoughts and observations about the work of art. So we are describing this work of art, perhaps responding. I'm not sure that we're yet interpreting that piece of artwork. Um, and then everybody in the small group has finished writing their words and phrases. Um, they'll read it together as a small group and then create a, using a small group work, um, kind of create a collaborative poem together. Okay, so in general, this, I'm gonna come back to you, in general, this is a great arts enhancement lesson. So when we talk about the difference between arts enhancement and arts integration, we're talking about whether or not the art or the music or the dance or whatever it is you're connecting is um, superfluous or if it's being used in service of the other content area. So clearly in this lesson, the main objective, the main thing that this teacher wants to have happen is for students to identify nouns, verbs, and adjectives to be able to recognize them and use them and then create with them, right? The artwork itself is just the avenue to do it rather than an actual um, linked piece that's going to help you to understand nouns, verbs, and adjectives. There are different ways to do that um, with arts. I'm not sure that visual art would be the best way to do it. I would actually take a look at music because you have options of using lyrics to better connect to um, nouns, adjectives, and verbs. 
you can do it with visual art, but I would love to see other examples of visual art that showcase nouns, verbs, adjectives, right? And then comparing those things and perhaps having students create with them. Because if you're going to create a poem, I'd love to see the students create a piece of artwork as well. Here's the thing. When you're thinking about the difference between enhancement and integration, it's like the, the muffin and the, the cupcake, right? If I can take the icing off of the cupcake and the cupcake stands alone, that's an arts enhancement lesson, right? The, there, if I can take the artwork off and that lesson stands by itself, that is an arts enhancement lesson. I could take the, the painting of Washington crossing the Delaware away from this lesson and this lesson would still stand on its own. It would still function, right? You don't need that piece of artwork to, to do anything in this, in this lesson, right? Whereas an arts integration lesson is like a blueberry muffin. If you try to take the blueberries out, the muffin crumbles, right? So in an arts integrated lesson, um, what you're gonna see are if you take the art out, that whole lesson would collapse on itself because it, you need the art in order for it to make sense. Okay, so I was going to do two, but I think one is enough for today. That's a lot of information. Um, I hope that audit was was helpful to you. I'd love to hear, like, what was the most beneficial piece that I kind of shared during that audit? And if you have a lesson that you'd love for me to take a look at, or if you have a lesson from somebody else that you'd like me to, to see, I'm happy and open to, um, to do these audits on a regular basis. So feel free to send that over. Um, you can use my email address, Susan at artsintegration.com, and I'd be happy to take a look and use it possibly for another audit Thursday. Hope that was helpful. Thanks.